This exhibition marks the first time so many important European old master paintings from the archaeology of New South Wales have ever been shown together away from their permanent home in Sydney's central business district. Spanning from the mid-16th to the mid-19th centuries, the exhibition has works from some of the leading Italian, French and British painters of the High Renaissance, Baroque, Rococo and Romantic periods. You'll see extravagant dresses, big hair, bizarre hats, plunging necklines. You'd almost think they came from the eastern suburbs. <laughs> I can say that because I live there. We only began collecting old masters in the 1950s. Between 1951 and 1976, however, the gallery acquired an outstanding group of English 18th century portraits, including works by three of the leading painters of the age, William Hogarth, Thomas Gainsborough, Joshua Reynolds. All three are in this exhibition. During these years, the gallery also purchased landscapes and subject pictures representative of British neoclassicism and romanticism by artists such as Richard Wilson, John Glover, Richard Westall, William Hamilton and Francis Danby. All five of them are in the exhibition. Portrait of a Gentleman with a Falcon by Niccolo Delabate is one of a small group of portraits dating from the period Delabate was still working in his native Modena. It depicts a northern Italian aristocrat whose haughty demeanour is emphasised by his averted gaze, heightening the sense of personal and social alienation. His imposing body completely fills the canvas and he is portrayed with an almost indecisive air, in contrast to his masterful pose and sporty regalia. This is typical of Italian mannerist portraiture during the 1540s, a time of tension and unease due to political and religious unrest. The art of falconry, indicated here by the tethered bird of prey, perched on the sitter's gloved hand, was a popular sport among the nobility of northern Italy. Holy Family with St John the Baptist by Luca Cambiasso. Cambiasso was the leading artist in Genoa in the 16th century. A number of his later works are nocturnal scenes where the figures are defined by flickering highlights from a single candle in an otherwise shadowy setting. He painted several variants of the Holy Family in this manner. It would be almost another half century before the idea of dramatic use of light and dark caught on among Caravaggio and his northern followers. This poetic night scene expresses the visual harmony aspired to in the High Renaissance. Cambiasso's style was based upon Raphael and Michelangelo and influenced by late Renaissance Venetian painters. The release of St. Peter by Bernardo Strozzi. Strozzi, a Capuchin monk, began his career in Genoa and from 1630 worked in Venice. This work depicts the Apostle St Peter miraculously released by an angel from the prison in which he had been incarcerated by King Herod prior to his intended execution. The highly focused composition, vigorous application of paint and unidealised facial types are typical of Strozzi's robust manner and display the Baroque conventions of a diagonal dynamic and brazen colouring. Madame de la Porte, Jean-Marc Natier. Natier, a French artist from a family of painters, is known for his portraits of the ladies of King Louis XV's court. Madame de la Porte is a fine example of the exquisite court portrait style that ensured Natier's success at Versailles from around 1740. The artist handles paint with a softness that recalls the pastel portraits that were so much in vogue at the period. The sitter was once thought to be a comtesse, but seems rather to be masquerading as one. 
She has now been identified as the wife of the still life painter Henri Ores Roland de la Porte. Her beauty must have attracted Natier. With bright eyes and eggshell skin, she does not seem real. James Maitland, 7th Earl of Lauderdale by Joshua Reynolds. Reynolds acquired a knowledge of European painting from his travels outside England. Known for his grand manor portraiture, we are given an impression of English aristocracy in the 18th century. He received a knighthood in 1769 and was appointed as principal painter to George III in 1784. The 41-year-old Lord Lauderdale had distinguished himself in the army, but was still young when he resigned and took a seat in the House of Lords. Unequalled in his capacity for flattering portrayal, Reynolds shows a sophisticated young aristocrat leaning on the base of a Solomonic column, suggestive of a trip to Italy the Scottish peer never in fact made. Our collection has continued to develop in more recent times with the acquisition of major Italian Renaissance and Baroque works. During the 1990s then, we received an extraordinary donation by James Fairfax, who just passed away recently, a great Australian philanthropist. And these works significantly enhanced the gallery's holdings of old masters, particularly in the area of 18th century French and Italian art. Notable examples in this exhibition include works by La Gilière and by Canaletto, that's the, the scene of the Piazza San Marco in Venice. Canaletto was a Venetian artist and the most famous view painter of the 18th century. He had worked as a theatrical scenery painter and most likely used a camera obscura as an aid, enabling him to be a great recorder of the physical glories of Venice. On the left is the Basilica of St. Mark's. The scene also shows the Doge's Palace, the columns supporting the line of St. Mark, and the statue of St. Theodore and the Campanile. Canaletto distorts the perspective radically in order to show all of these buildings as if from the same viewpoint. We see the piazza populated by an array of merchants, friars, wigged officials, masked revellers, mysterious women, children and dogs. These paintings do remind us of what is constant in human experience and emotion, while offering an insight into ages and cultures so different from our own. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed with this uh, exhibition uh, and delighted to see so many of you, passionate lovers of arts, here to support this opening night. And uh, having said that, it's my incredible honour to be able to declare European Old Masters, 16th of the 19th century, at the Hazelhurst Gallery, officially open. Thanks for having me.